everybody to December! In case you cannot tell by my Christmas tree and by nothing else really, it's December. It's the holiday season in case you celebrate the holidays. If you don't, it's just December. We have a few plans for today so let me just walk you through them. One, my November wrap-up is due so I'm gonna show you all the books that I read in November. It doesn't look like it's a lot because I read these five books as physical books and then 10 ebooks, but we're gonna talk about them and then I'm gonna take you along for my reading journal prep for December. So we're gonna make those spreads for December. And then the last thing that I wanna do is decorate for Christmas. So first things first, my advent calendar. My mom makes me an advent calendar every year and then she ships it to me. And this year she shipped me this Christmas tree. This is a fake Christmas tree. So she said she was gonna send me my Christmas tree and then every day I get a new ornament for the Christmas tree. And ooh, she also got me little vegan Haribos. Look at them. It's a bookish one! I love it so much. Thank you, Mom. But look at it. Look at it. It's a little pile of books. Okay, let's hang that one up. Alrighty, now that that's done, we're gonna focus on the wrap-up part of this video first, just so that I can get all of these books out of the way. Now, most of these books I've read in videos. I've either read them in this video that I'm gonna link up here or in the video that's gonna be up next Tuesday. So stay tuned for that, which is why I'm gonna keep most of these review is pretty pretty short but I'm gonna tell you about each of them. I'm gonna grab my reading journal which is this yellow thing. The first book I read, wait I'm gonna have to move a little bit, the first book I read was Sweet Temptation. Now I rated this book a two stars which means it wasn't the worst but it also wasn't good. The reason for this is this book made me angry because, and that's the hardest thing, this is a mafia age gap arranged marriage sort of thing. And usually I don't mind these, except the age gap part was what got me in this case because I'm okay with an age gap, you know? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine as long as both parties are adults and they choose this out of their free will. But in this case, the girl is 17 and the, the dude's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna wait until she's 18 to marry her. So like they make him the good guy for waiting for her until she's officially an adult, but um, no, it's just a no. I think the, the rest of the book was fine. It was fun, but at the same time, I was always thinking of this 17 year old girl that walks into the room and calls her future husband sir for the first time that she sees him. It was just a little weird. So I just rated this two stars and three out of five chili peppers. It, there were a few scenes, but it was somewhere between three and four for me personally. The next book that I read was a fantasy one and it was free on Kindle Unlimited as well. And that was of Stormlarks and Silence. This one, I, 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 I didn't expect anything from it. And I got a three and a half star read out of it with no spice at all. So this is like a YA fantasy, which is something that I don't often see on Kindle Limited, except for maybe The Cruel Prince that's on there as well, right? Okay, so this is a I've come to kill you fantasy romance. I really enjoyed the magical concept. I enjoyed what's what's happening there. And if you're looking for something chill and maybe an easy fantasy book to get into, this is definitely one of those. After that, I'm just gonna put these three together in one because I read the Love Light Farm series. And they were really cool. So the first one, Love Life Arms. That is a best friends to lovers fake dating romance. And it was so good, it was so fun. So this main character, she owns a Christmas tree farm. So she signs up for a newspaper article on her and her farm. She said, oh, you know what? My partner and I were doing this. So she needs a partner. And who better to be her partner than her longtime best friend who she's always had feelings for and who's always had feelings for her. So that's just a fun time. So they have to pretend for like the reporters and stuff. So In the Weeds is about Beckett, Beck for short. He also, he lives on the farm and it's it's also just, it's such a sweet one, okay? This one I didn't like as much. It was, it was still good, it was still fun, it was still a three star rate for me. I wasn't entirely sold on their storyline, so that was just a little mm, for me. 
And the third one is mixed signals. This one I gave like a three and a half star rating. It was it was fun. It was a good time again. In this one we have like a dating coach kind of situation where he teaches her how to date and then of course they end up together because that's what always happens. But that's why we're here, right? We're here for the predictability of things. All of these I would say are like a two out of five spice rating. So you have like one or two scenes, but not too major. Speaking of spice and more overpowering the storyline, King of Greed. These books are a lot more spicy. I rated this a 4 out of 5 chili peppers and a 3 out of 5 stars. It was good, it was fun, I had a good time, but I also had some issues with it. So if you don't know, this is a billionaire romance series by Anna Huang. I've read the first two, they were also alright, this one was also just alright. This story is about a dude who's a billionaire and then his wife and he completely forgets that she even exists. So she's like, you know what, I want a divorce and then this is basically him trying to get her back. And I think that's what bothered me because at this point I was like, you know what, you didn't try before, like, because, not because she's gone, you want her back. She's too good for you. So yeah, that was that that bothered me a little bit, but other than that, it was it was an alright story. It was fine. And then we have my five star read for the month. It was such a good one. I enjoyed this a lot, a lot, a lot. We have Love Redesign. Now I talked a lot about this in my finding a five star read marathon situation. So this is also a billionaire romance because for now, we're sticking with all of the billionaire romances that I read. She's a TV interior design decorator person and he owns a construction firm at home. They've known each other from like childhood and they were like childhood crush, childhood enemies, sort of. And when she gets back, he's supposed to help her so that she can leave fast because um, she doesn't want to stay there. She just got out of a really bad breakup and they don't know what's really going on. And they work, they work together. They like fix her up or a house together. And it's, it's a cute one. It's a precious one. I gave it two out of five chili peppers, which for a uh, Lauren Asher book is not a lot, honestly. It wasn't that much. It was, it was fine. It was good. I liked it a lot. Terms and Conditions, another Lauren Asher book. Three stars, three chili peppers. This was fine. This was all right. It was it was a good time. These are the Dreamland billionaires, so they have like this firm that is like Disney, but it's Dreamland. So essentially, these three brothers own Disney, right? For the sake of telling you what the book is about, I'm gonna pretend it's Disney. And the first brother, Rowan, he owns like Disney World. And so each of those three brothers had their own things to do to gain their inheritance. For this one, Declan has to marry somebody. So his assistant is like, you know what, just marry me. We, we, we work together. And this is their romance story. It's kind of cute, it's kind of nice. I liked it, I enjoyed it. I had some issues with it. Again, I always have some issues with stuff, but overall, good time, fun time. And then I also read the Final Offer. This is the third book, it's about the third brother. I didn't like this as much. I gave this like two and a half stars and two chili peppers. This had the third brother who is an alcoholic and he has to, this is very important for the story by the way, he has to sell a house, sell a lake house. But in this lake house is his ex-girlfriend with uh, her daughter and they live there. And so he has to sell this house together with her and, um, I mean, you know what's gonna happen, right? I'm not gonna have to tell you what happens. But it was, it was alright, it was alright. It was my least favorite in this series, that's just all I'm gonna say. The first one was incredible, I loved the first one, so if you're gonna start this series, read the first one, it's really good. And with that, we're moving on from the billionaire romances, and we're moving to a fantasy book that I hated. Now, Iron Flame just wasn't it for me. It wasn't it. It was a half a star and I'm not ashamed of it. I am not because I didn't like the book and that's fine. I don't have to like every single book just because people on the internet seem to like it. But Iron Flame just wasn't my kind of book, wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't like it and that's fine. So we're just gonna move on from Iron Flame because I actually, I, I DNF'd this book. It was that bad. I was so bored throughout this book that I didn't want to continue. I didn't care enough about the storyline, didn't care enough about the characters anymore. Even though I loved them in the first one, it just happened. And I'm, I was, I was distraught when I read it. It was horrible because I so, I wanted to enjoy it. But I just didn't. So then the next book that I read, also in this video by the way, was Happy Place by Emily Henry. This was, this was fun, it was a four stars. One chili pepper, there was just like one scene in there that's 
a little more spicy. The rest was, I think it was one closed door. It was good, it was fun. I had a good time. This is essentially about two people who were once engaged and then they broke up, but they still have to go on vacation with their best friends because they haven't told their best friends that they're broken up. They just vacation together and everybody thinks they're still a couple, so they're pretending. So it's a little bit of fake dating, also a little bit of second chance romance. It's a cute one, it's a fun one, it's a good read for summer or it's a good read for if you're missing summer, like I am right now, because it's snowing outside. Which is weird, because I don't actually like summer that much, and fall and winter are my favorite seasons, so... Don't exactly know what that's about, but it's a good book, it's a fun one, and you should pick it up if you see it anywhere. Because it's good. All of Emily Henry's books are good, by the way. The next one is another friends to lovers romance. How to kiss your best friend. This is a small town romance series, again. There's four books in it about the four different brothers that all live in this small town. I'm currently reading them because I want to get to the fourth one, which is a movie star romance. The first one, however, is like just small town, friends to lovers. She's a travel journalist. He's a teacher and he's a kayak instructor. Was it kayak? It's a boat, okay? He's like, he goes down a stream in a boat. That's what he does. And so they just have their own little romance. It was cute. It was a cute one. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. So it was just like a three and a half stars, one chili pepper out of five. Solid good book. And then the next one was out of my comfort zone. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say it. It was so out of my comfort zone. It was Cinderella's Faking It. I rated this book a two and a half stars because it was still a good time and a fun time, but five chili peppers. And five chili peppers is not my thing. Like, I do well up until three, and everything above three is out of my comfort zone. I read this because I saw the dedication, and it the dedication is for all my neurodivergent girlies who want to get railed. And I was like, okay, you know, the first, first line sounds great, I'm gonna read it. And then the second line was like, mm, you know what, maybe that's not as important. It wasn't as important. The book had so, so many spicy scenes in there. I was overwhelmed by it, but we have an, a, another age gap billionaire romance situation with technically a Cinderella aspect. I didn't see the Cinderella aspect. I didn't care as much though, but it wasn't, it really wasn't Cinderella. So she's pretending to be an heiress. It's sort of like the princess switch on Netflix. You remember that? Mm-hmm. That's this one, but it was, it was fun. It was, it was, it was nice. And then the last two books are actually books that I own. Wow, what? What did you do? Checkmate. Now, these are both books that I read for the video that I'm currently filming. So you're gonna learn more about these when I actually talk about them. First one, Checkmate, really cute story. It's an Allie Hazelwood book. What more would you expect? The only issue that I had with this book was that it is advertised as a YA romance book, but to me, it felt like if you take the love hypothesis and you just make all the spicy scenes closed door, that's this book. It's about two teenagers, they're 18 and 20, so I would say it's a new adult book because in my opinion, young adult books are people under the age of 18. I would say it's a new adult book that is spice free, that has closed door spicy scenes, but it's definitely mentioned and it's definitely, you know what's happening with them. The story itself was cute. It wasn't extraordinary like some of her other books were, but it was a good time. So we have two chess playing teenagers and they're like sort of enemies, but he's, he's supposed to be this bad grumpy guy, but he's actually like a golden retriever and it's kind of sweet. So I enjoyed this. I enjoyed him more than I liked her. She wasn't, she was not my alley. I couldn't relate to her at all. So Maybe that's why I didn't like the book as much. And then the last book that I read, A Curse for True Love. This one was a four and a half star book. It was incredibly good. It was so much fun. I loved this book so, so much. I had to deduct a star, and I talked about this in the other video that I'm making right now, because the villain in this book, I'm not gonna tell you who the villain is, because if you know, you know, and if you don't, you haven't read them yet, and you should. The villain was too villainous. The villain was just going around, pushing people, killing innocent children. She tried to make him as bad as possible, 
and it was a little over like it was too much it was too much and I can't imagine anybody doing the things that he does and still getting away with it those were all the books that I read it was good right it was a good time and now we're gonna do what we do best we decorate for Christmas so Christmas decorating montage let's go We're done, I would say. I don't have much. I've also left the mushrooms in there because I was like, they're mushrooms. Like, they can stay all year round. I might also not be in the mood to decorate as much because it's literally covered in snow outside, so I don't need to decorate as much. And now we're gonna go over and start on my reading journal spreads for December. Let's go. Ta-da! My reading journal. Welcome. I'm still experimenting with the camera placement, but we're doing fine. In case you're wondering, this is a scribble and dot notebook. It's an A5. I just like it. It has very thick pages. I only recently started doing a reading journal. We're gonna go to December. So for December, I decided to go with the theme of Akatar. I don't know why, but it just felt like December winter to me. Maybe because I was thinking of the forest scene, who knows. So the first thing I did was I drew the mountains for the night court with the stars on top. I was going to draw a moon, but then I was like, oh, that's gonna look ugly, so I didn't. And then I wrote a little quote by Tamlin, which is weird. Why did I choose the quote by Tamlin? We don't know. But it was, don't feel bad for one moment about doing what brings you joy. I like that. Then on the right, I drew in big letters, I wrote December it's fine. And then I drew the little continent that they're on in the books. I just thought that would look cute. I did trace that before, so I didn't do that like by hand. That's crazy. Then I drew some tiny little roses in the corner. It felt fitting for the theme. And then some little snowflakes and some little stars. And then for the next page, I just drew tiny little boxes for my December TBR, for my reading stats and all the books that I read. But I'm gonna show you those later because honestly, if they're empty, they don't look like anything. So I'm just gonna show you what they look like at a later point when they're already filled out for last month. Alrighty, so this is what we have for December. We have the beginning spread. I never put any books on the beginning spread. I didn't do it for November. I won't do it for December. I just I just like it clean. I also don't use colors. I'm just gonna... I think I'm even gonna leave the roses white. I might do some shading to the mountains. Also not entirely sure. That's just the title page. I have a very simple layout for this. I'm gonna show you this by showing you what it looks like for November. This is what it looks like for November. I have the TBR books, I have the statistics, and then all of the books that I read. And then I stamp in the stars and the little chili peppers. And then what I'm trying to do is write some short little texts. I only started by the end of last month, but I feel like that's fine. I enjoy it a lot. I'm still debating if I want to color in the little mushroom and the little fox, but for now I'm just gonna leave it all white because I don't have my colored pencils right now. But that's about what it should look like. So then I'm gonna like put another page of the books that I read here. If I need it, I'm gonna leave space definitely. And then this is where I'm gonna put all the books. Like this is my book buying bin. Wait, we can color in some, some, some things that I did. So today is the second and I didn't buy any books on the first. And I'm not planning on buying books today, so I won't do that. I did buy a book here but that's fine. Then these are my pre-orders. For the first month that I did this, I did a little colorful one and I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying this. This was not mine. But then I started doing a little more of a cleaner look and I've been enjoying that a lot. But I do read a lot of books each month, so I need my space and I don't need it to be all cramped up. But yeah, those are my 
December spreads. I hope you enjoyed them. And I'm gonna now film an outro. That was it for this video. We're done. I have all my pages done. I have everything done. And now I can go back to reading. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different, but I really enjoy reading journal videos. So I thought maybe you wanted to see how I do mine. With that, I'm gonna say goodbye to you all and I'm gonna see you all for the next video that I make. Bye! Have a nice day! By the way, I'm pretty sure that I got some sort of inspiration somewhere on Pinterest for these pages, by the way. I just have no idea where. I probably saw something and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna use that. And then this border thing that I do, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw this somewhere else. I just like it so much. Yeah. Okay. Bye!